I am uh, Dr. Kaisar Ahmed, uh, President of uh, IAP Kashmir branch and I head the Department of uh, Pediatrics at uh, Government Medical College Srinagar and uh, we have a pediatric facility uh, which is a hospital in itself, GP Pant Hospital, uh, a bed capacity of almost 200 uh, with a neonatal level 1, level 2 and level 3 capacity which is almost 120. We also have a uh, Laldid hospital that's an obstetric and gynae hospital which is almost 700 bedded hospital and uh, we have an 80 bedded uh, neonatal facility there as well. If you go back uh, to a few decades by, and uh, see the health uh, scenario was not that good. Um, uh, pediatric, uh, in fact, the pediatric uh, faculty or even the uh, care of neonates was not being done in a proper way. Um, say if you go just two decades or two and a half decades, the newborns used to be bathed, they used to be immediately after birth. And that was something, or they used to be resuscitated with a uh, lot of uh, very harsh measures which now have changed over uh, two decades and uh, the level of neonatal care has definitely improved and uh, particularly uh, I would say that uh, overall uh, our uh, infant mortality rate in uh, JNK is less than the national figure. Uh, so far as the neonatal mortality rate is, if we go five or six, it is on the higher side but over uh, last few years it has definitely uh, improved and the neonatal mortality has gone down. Um, most of uh, these, uh, the reason uh, probably which um, has brought down this uh, figure is the implementation of certain policies and uh, one of, some of them are like trainings have taken place. Trainings, see we lack uh, the human resource, that's our uh, most important drawback. But uh, to train our, our capacity building of whatever resource we have, which it is the most important immediate measure which we can take play, uh, take, and the trainings since we work in a government medical college and it's a teaching institution we have um, trained people for pediatric and neonatal care and uh, the skills which have been passed uh, they have helped in reducing uh, the mortality um, and uh, one of the uh, one of the drawbacks which is uh, important from our point of view is the distance of primary, secondary, and tertiary healthcare. Say the distance would be almost 40 kilometers, and transferring a newborn for 40 kilometers would be very difficult. So, to upgrade those centers, particularly in the primary and secondary healthcare, would be very important. And one of the, the, the good things which possibly is happening is uh, the developing of medical colleges now, we uh, are having about four or five have been proposed and if these medical colleges come up at district levels that will bring, bring a sea change in the overall health care because about JK I will tell you that almost 90 percent of 80 to 90 percent of the health care is provided by the government sector which does, is not happening in other states. So the government sector has a very huge presence in um, uh, the overall medical care. So far as um, uh, newborn care is concerned, we have uh, two of our uh, institutes which are developed, we are giving neonatal care, level two or level three, which we call as, uh, which is, one is at, uh, we call it Sher Kashmir Institute of Medical Sciences in Sora, there is a neonatal unit. Uh, we have a level one to level three care in our hospital and we are also taking care in Laldid Hospital. But overall, what we need is to develop the newborn care and the SNCUs in the districts and sub-districts. Uh, now we are trained, the postgraduates which are flowing out from our institutions, they are going to the district level, district and sub-district levels, but the number is maker to, uh, so that is one of the challenges that we need to have the human resource and to be put in there. And second most important thing would be the communication between primary, secondary and tertiary. Like I get a patient, I, I expect a newborn being transferred, I should know about it. So that lack of communication between the primary and secondary is one of the challenges which we can easily overcome. And the second thing which is very important from overall perspective, even at the national level, is the 
there has to be a communication coordination between various specialties which is probably lacking. We need to have a coordination between obstetrics and gynae, we need to have in other subspecialties because newborn is not a newborn as a neonatologist, now there is new, neonatal cardiology, neonatal uh, neurology, developmental, so there are so many aspects of a newborn which needs need to be taken care of and coordination in all these aspects is important that as a doctor I do not know everything that is everyone I think we should I don't know so that is what we need to build up in our system. There are policies uh, we have the programs like uh, uh, NHM, JSSK, uh, RBSK lot many policies are there and over a period of last few years I think there has been a sea change like in our system we have uh, a zero spending for a newborn in our hospital that means a newborn comes gets everything from the hospital and even drop back facility is there so overall the newborn mortality has definitely shown a lower um, gone on the low well, less as compared to what it was uh, previously and um, second thing which uh, possibly was not there which even uh, throughout uh, the country is lack of documentation we don't document so now that documentation is coming up and more and more data we have in our database that is going to tell us what where what are our gray areas and where we need to improve so documentation has started now and that's a good point I think more of uh, technocrats need to give the solutions rather than they come from uh, those who are not uh, experts in the field. So they need to be uh, kept as stakeholders, that is one. Uh, second is a definite con uh, connect between the medical education and health as a single unit so that there is not like we are, we may be overloaded. We have to find a solution because even at the peripheral level they have to send the uh, patients to the tertiary center. We may be overloaded but if there is a proper coordination between the two, if there is a feedback which goes to the districts and at the same time if there are some rounds or some clinical rounds in the districts by the tertiary care people and they take a little care in the district levels also that's going to bring a sea change and that's also going to build up a communication. We do have uh, four medical colleges uh, as of now and uh, uh, medical education is fairly good but I think the overall scenario what, where we um, need to improve is nursing. Nursing uh, uh, education has to improve, that is one. Second is uh, we need to put in our curriculum the means of communication. The communication skills are not being imparted to our undergraduates. With the result, knowledge which they have, they are put in the casualty and they do not know how to respond to the public. And this is a grey area where we need to work on. I think communication skills has to be a part of the medical curriculum and education so that I know how to talk to the parents I know what their problems are, I know how to communicate the most uh, uh, critical issues with them and how to convince them. Uh, that is very important and how to empathize with them, how to uh, ask them, how to respond to that. So these are certain things which we need to look at and to improve on those areas. Clinically and other things we have a huge material. Uh, to study on but uh, I think this is an area where we need to look at. I would say one of the most important uh, most important things, most important areas is to uh, initiate is uh, and to reduce the neonatal mortality is to uh, initiate the breastfeeding within first hour of life. It is very important as we know that almost 90 newborns out of 100 do not need resuscitation. They know not to be separated from the mother because if they are kept with the mother on the chest of the mother, the rate of infection is much, much less because they will share the same bacterial flora which the mother has. 
So that is one area which we need to second is why is this uh, one hour important for feeding? See, the first milk, the human milk which goes into the uh, my, uh, baby's body coats the whole gastrointestinal tract and this coating does not allow any infection to penetrate in. Now you see the if we do not feed the baby within the first hour, the incidence of deaths increase. When we feed the baby on in second hour or fourth hour, the it leaps up to two or three times. So this is important that we feed the babies uh, immediately when the baby is ready to feed. That is one recommendation which we have to impress to reduce. Second is now we are facing a huge number of preterm babies, and preterm babies also need mother's milk, and the nature has kept such a wonderful. Uh, whole structure that the mother, the mother's milk, who bears a preterm baby, is specifically ready and almost tailored to the needs of this small, tiny baby. We do not need to give anything else to this baby. So this has a little more proteins which the baby requires, and other electrolytes which the baby requires. So that is why we are first impressing upon starting of mother's milk immediately after birth. Even in the neonatal intensive care units, we are recommending the mother's milk. And it's important that this human milk banking is to store the milk. Suppose a baby is not able to suck, we can store the mother's own milk in a way it is used, if it is kept even at the room temperature, it can be used for 6 to 8 hours. In terms of just expressing the mother's milk and then storing, we might need a little refrigeration at times. But this milk is has such wonderful things in it, like the live organisms, the live things which help the baby to prevent or to fight infection, which no other artificial milk has. So at times when the baby is not able to suck, we can store this milk and we can refrigerate this milk. A proper refrigeration is done. And the most important thing about it is that it shouldn't get infected. So infection control measures. We, may have, we have to pasteurize this milk for a particular period of um, at a particular temperature so that the organisms which are there get killed, the, uh, those organisms which can be harmful, and then we can use this milk. So human milk banking as such is to basically, in our scenario, in our developing countries, it has to be first we have to ensure that the mother's milk, it is the mother's own milk which at times if the baby is too tiny, we can just uh, store it and give it to this baby at a later stage and this is go definitely going to reduce our uh, neonatal mortality, particularly the preemies, the small babies who are born preterm require this milk. But I would again impress that this human milk banking in our scenario has to be preferably from the mother's own milk who has the baby and this milk can be stored properly and then it can be reused. And uh, these babies, like we have the neonatal intensive care units, and in neonatal intensive care units, you have babies on ventilators, you have babies with all the uh, things, pipes going here and there, and this milk can later on be fed through a tube, which we usually pass, and this milk has all the great properties, which no other milk can match. But again, impress whenever in our study, uh, setting we should have this human milk bagging and prefer the mother's own milk. And one of the uh, uh, very uh, misnomers is that if mother's milk is not enough, and this is what is being exploited even by the marketing giants. And I can assure you that almost 90 to 99 percent of the mothers can breastfeed can express their milk and the natural way of milk a natural way of feeding and even this banking is definitely I'm sure that is going to make a huge dent 
in preventing the neonatal mortality. Because there are certain key uh, interventions which help in reducing the mortality. And we are seeing this uh, uh, exclusive breastfeeding as 15% of um, dent it can be mortality. Uh, ORS, another 15%. Uh, vaccines, maybe around 2 to 6%. So other as interventions are important, but these two interventions and exclusive breastfeeding, I would again impress, is the most important, inexpensive, and great intervention where we should be supportive. We have to support it because we have to support the people around, the mother. We have to protect it. And this is important from all uh, aspects that we do it, we support uh, and protect breastfeeding and promote it.